Hi, so today I want to talk about commas. And though commas can be look very confusing, and when you look at style guides and grammar books, there are tons of rules about them. Really, the, break, the way they work in writing breaks down to about three simple precepts. And if you focus on those and really remember those and study them and think about them, you get really good with commas. So let's start by taking a look at it. Um, so the first thing with commas, or the three things we're going to look at today, are um, dividing between a list of three or more things, and that's the easiest one, connecting full sentences with commas and fanboys, and setting off extra information. So we'll look at that in general, but we'll also look at three different things in that, showing contrast, setting direct address off, and setting off um, an exclam exclamation. So here we go, the first one, dividing between a list of three things. Now this one's really straightforward. If you have three or more things in your sentence, items, phrases, or sentences, you put a comma between each one, and the last one will have and, so, so, or, but, depending on what you need there. So for the example, the first sentence with items, I went to the store and bought milk, bread, coffee, and tortillas. So we have milk, comma, bread, comma, coffee, comma, and tortillas. With phrases, I like teaching grammar, reading books, and watching movies. So I've got teaching grammar, comma, reading books, comma, and watching movies. And then also if we have whole sentences, this is a correct way to use commas to connect whole sentences. I used to get really frustrated when using commas, comma, then I learned the rules, comma, and now I don't worry as much at all. And so in this case, we have to make sure each one's a sentence. I used to get frustrated when using commas, and that's a true sentence. I learned the rules, another true sentence. Now I don't worry as much at all, another true sentence. So the basic, that first, so that first basic rule is if you have three things in a sentence, whether it's words, phrases, or sentences, put that comma between them. So in class I do comma dances, and this is the comma dance for the list. Three things or more, that's the only thing you've got to remember, not just two things. Um, one of the details to know about this, though, is that last comma, and some of you may have been thinking, wait, why does she have that comma after coffee before the end, or after reading books, comma, and watching movies, or between those last two sentences before the end? It is acceptable in more informal writing to leave that out. It is called the Oxford comma. In this class, we're going to use it because I want to teach you for the strictest person in the world. And if I can teach you to write for somebody who is the most crazy picky person about grammar, then you can decide how much you need to be formal or when you can kind of notch it down some. So in this class, we're going to use that Oxford comma. But in other writing, if you decide not to use it, just make sure that it doesn't create confusion. And here's one of the best examples for why this is important. With the Oxford comma, we invited the strippers, comma, JFK, comma, and Stalin. There we go. So we've got three different sets of people, strippers, JFK, Stalin. Stalin. So we have a comma here, a comma here. Without that Oxford comma, check out and see what it ends up saying, we invited the strippers, comma, JFK and Stalin. What this does is when we leave that one off between JFK and Stalin, it makes JFK and Stalin just be renaming who these strippers are. So depending on what you want, we have to think about do we need that Oxford comma or not. So it's a very good example of that. Um, so don't forget Individual items, phrases, sentences, if you've got more than two, three or more, then put those commas in between. And in this class, when you're writing in your formal papers for any of your school classes, put that final comma there, that Oxford comma there. Cool beans. And here's one more example of why we don't want to mess up with commas. I like cooking my family and pets. No, I like cooking, comma, my family, comma, and pets. So... Use commas. Don't be a psycho. The next rule is pretty straightforward, and actually we looked at it in with this first rule. So if we have two sentences, so 
all sentences, got to have that subject, that predicate, got to be a full and complete sentences, and we're going to hook it together. We don't do it with just the comma. The comma is just this little puny thing, and it won't stick full sentences together. We're going to use it with one of these fanboys. Technically, they're coordinating conjunctions. That's not going to be on the test. They're just small connector words. Um, and so we've got to use the, the connector words are also small and puny. So we've got to use the comma and the coordinating conjunction together. And so here, if we have a full sentence here, we would have a comma and the fanboys. And this is exactly what we saw in the list. If we have a sentence, we have a comma, sentence, comma, one of the fanboys, and then our other sentence, so that we have that list. Now we can, if the word is the same, sentence that represents the commas here, we can cancel it out just in math and just use one fanboy. And I'll show you an example of that. But real quick, here's the dance for using commas and, and fanboys to connect things. If you've got one full sentence over here and you've got one full sentence over here, you got to have something in the middle. And that's what you want, is you want that comma and that fanboy. So that's just, remember me doing this. When you're writing and you're reading your writing, do this. Figure it out, okay? So back to some examples. For example, I could have caught the ball, comma, but I was distracted. We're going to check that to say, I could have caught the ball, period. Yeah, that's a full sentence. I was distracted, period. That's a full sentence. Since it's a full sentence, we can put that comma, but if we just put that comma, it's a run-on. It's that few sentence, that comma splice. So we could put that comma and that fanboy together. Let's check out the next one. I wanted to stay home. Marcus wanted to go out, comma. Marcus wanted to go out to eat, comma. And Chandra wanted to go swimming. Here, the word we would put in between the first and second sentence is and. I wanted to stay home, comma, and Marcus wanted to go out to eat, comma, and Chandra wanted to go swimming. Since that's so repetitive, we don't, we can drop that first and, it's like I said in math, when you get to cancel things out, and just use the second one. If we phrased it like this, we would use all the coordinating conjunctions. I wanted to stay home, comma, and Marcus wanted to go out to eat, comma, but Chandra wanted to go swimming. So in that case, what we are doing is we're using different words so they don't cancel out. And so that's how you can think of that of why we drop that coordinating conjunction, that fanboy right after that first and second sentence. But either way, what do we have? Full sentence, comma, full sentence, comma, fanboy, full sentence. So at least before that last sentence, we always want a fanboy. Now next I'm going to show you um, one of the mistakes that people make most often, and when I say people, I mean me. I am people, strangely. Um, but I, I do this all the time. I actually did this yesterday whenever I was writing an assignment or something for the website. I can't remember what it was, but I tend to have a list of two things. We went over that, right? Okay. No commas between two things, three things or more, right? And it'll be long phrases, and I'll just want to throw a comma in there. It's just kind of this automatic thing we want to do. But technically, it is incorrect. So if you just have a list of two things, you don't need a comma. Take a look at this and see if it reminds you of something that you might do. Um, I wish I had a cup of coffee and a piece of homemade cake. Now, there is something in me that just wants to put a comma right there between coffee and. I wish I had a cup of coffee, comma, and a piece of homemade cake. Ah! No, don't do it. And when we break it apart, I always look for that and. I'm looking for that and, that for, that but. That So I look for either my commas or my fanboys. When I find a fanboy, the first thing I ask is, is this a list of two things? Or if it's like a longer, lots of words, I say, is this really two sentences? I wish I had a cup of coffee fine sentence. I totally wish I had a cup of coffee right now. That would be great. Period. Don't need anything else. A piece of homemade chocolate cake. Yeah, sounds good, but don't even know what I'm talking about because there's no subject there. So here, I wish I had a piece of coffee and a cup, sorry, a cup of coffee and a piece of homemade chocolate cake is just two things. That's all I'm saying I want. So remember, if this, is a, if this is a full sentence but this isn't, or vice versa, if this is a full sentence and this isn't, then you're not going to be using 
this comma rule. We might be using the next one, but not this one. And in a case like that, with the coffee and the cake, really look at your sentence. I always look for those ands, or I look for the commas, and I ask myself, what's going on here? Do you have a list of three or more things? If not, okay, maybe don't need commas. Um, do you have two full sentences? with A sentence like the one we just looked at, that's one where I'll just be writing fast and I don't even think about it. Um, and so when I'm proofreading, I have to go back, slow down, and say, wait, that's not a list of three or more things. That's not two full sentences. Ask yourself about the next rule, which is where we'll go in a minute. Um, so watch out for this one. Now, there are exceptions. When you have very short sentences and you're just hooking them together, you don't have to use the comma. The sun set and it grew cold. The sun set is a full sentence. It grew cold is a full sentence. Here, because they're very short, we don't have to use the comma. Technically, it is correct, but I think visually you can see there are just so few words there we really don't need anymore. So that's your rule. One full sentence on one side, one full sentence on the other. You definitely want the fanboy and the comma. If you've got the three, decide if you need all the fanboys. If they're different, you will. If they're the same, you can cancel out. Um, so that's the basic second rule. Now the third one is a little trickier because it requires us to make decisions about context and about ideas. So check out this. The criminal said the judge was an idiot. Boom. The criminal is saying that the judge is an idiot. The criminal, said the judge, was an idiot. Here, it's the judge saying the criminal is an idiot. So this is a great example of how this extra information, when we mark out extra information in our sentence, can totally change the meaning and why you need to be very careful with thinking about how you use these and stop and think these through. So here's an example. Um, <clears throat> what we're looking for is if you have extra information like details, things that set context, or things that give readers a clearer picture and they don't contribute to the essential meaning of your sentence, put commas around them. They're extra. Now, a word here, it doesn't mean they don't add to what you're saying, that they're not important to your story, to your message you're getting across, to any of those things. That's highly important. Um, but what they, what we're saying they're extra to is they're extra to your basic sentence. Now, if you remember from the sentence video, she talked about how not only do we have a, a noun and a verb, a subject and a predicate, but we have to have that complete thought. Um, so if we don't have that complete thought, then we want to leave stuff in there, and that's where you want to think about this. So let's check out Erwin and his cat. When Erwin was ready to iron, his cat jumped on the ironing board. Now, when I read it that way, it kind of sounds like maybe Erwin was ready to iron his cat. No, we will have no ironing of cats. Really, the main point of this sentence is his cat jumped on the ironing board. This, when Erwin was ready to iron, is extra information. It's giving us a detail. Of course, that's probably important to that. What did he do? He, he threw the iron across the room. He did a dance. I mean, you know, whatever. He said, hey, cat, get out of here. Um, so it's probably leading into something. But the main point is the cat jumped on the ironing board. Without the cat doing that, we wouldn't care that it was happened when he was ready to iron. We wouldn't care that next he said, hey, cat, get out of here. Whatever it is, the key part there is his cat jumped on the ironing board. And so you can see how it's really very important to work on being able to identify those full and complete sentences because commas are separating um, these parts. And that's what a lot of the other punctuation we'll study is doing. It's separating these parts so we can see you know, exactly how they fit together, where those main points are. So in this case, really figuring out where is that main cat part and what's extraneous is important. All right, let's look at another one, or a couple more, actually. Um, now, that extra information might come at the beginning, the middle, or the end of your sentence. Here it is right here. From Terry Mann to Grace Haddocks, comma, EPCC has a number of good English teachers. This, from Terry Mann to Grace Haddocks, is extra. The main point is EPCC has a number of good English teachers. These are examples, so we're putting them in commas. Your handwriting, said the teacher, is amazing. And so this is always a clue. Whenever you see said someone, remarked, stated, whatever, nine times out of ten, you're going to have commas around it. It's extra. It's not telling us the main sentence, which is your handwriting is amazing, but it's giving us a detail of who said it. 
I went to lunch with my friend Fran, comma, who lives in Vinton. So in this case, the main point is I went to lunch with my friend. I'm giving you extra information by telling where you where she lives. So all of this stuff in bold is not necessary to the sentence. And in grammar books, it'll often be called non-restrictive. It's extra information or not necessary. So if you have that extra information, then you can put you put commas around it. Now let's see. Um, here's where it gets tricky. Now if it does point to something specific and taking that extra information out changes your meaning, then you don't want to separate it out. So for example, the student who made an A helped me study for the test. And here's where you have to think about context. What's going on in the conversation, in the essay, in the article, above and below that? Does it make sense without what looks like maybe extra information? So the student who made an A helped me study for the test. I'm claiming this does because it's not just the student helped me study for the test. I'm telling you which one. Um, the desserts were good is a nice thing to say, but the raspberry dessert was the best would be very specific. So here, this who made an A actually helps us know which exact student it was. And so in this case, it's necessary. If you like video games, you should read Soda Pop Soldier, Control-Alt-Delete, oh, that should be Control-Alt-Revolt, and Ready Player One. The book Ready Player One is super. Now, here's an example where you can think of it more in context. You know, I just gave you a whole bunch of books. Soda Pop Soldier, Control-Alt-Revolt, Ready Player One. Yes, the movie was good, but the book was better. Read them all. They're wonderful. Um, so if you um, like those, they're great books to read. Now, if I say, you know, which one did I read the fastest? I can't just say the book. You won't know. At this point, I've got to say... I read the book Ready Player One the fastest. Obviously, I could just say I read Ready Player One the fastest. But in that case, naming it is important because we've been talking about, about a lot of other things. So if you're talking about a whole lot of things and nobody's going to know which one you're referring to, then we don't need those commas. So if we don't need it, this is the comma dance for the extra information, we can put those commas around it. They're not baby parentheses, but hold off on using the parentheses, really. Parentheses, we really only want to use them for technical reasons and very rarely. But we are putting those commas around it. If that information is important so people understand what it is we're saying, don't put those commas around it. Let's take a couple, uh, look at a couple more examples. Um, and these are definitely, it depends, where we think about the context. The concert that was expensive was well worth it. Now here, that was expensive shows us which one, just like with the book, was really great. You won't know which one I'm talking about unless I give the name. The concert, if we were talking about a lot of concerts, wouldn't know which one unless that, that was expensive is in there. Here, we went to the concert, which was expensive, changes the meaning. This is kind of just a, by the way, oh, I spent a lot of money, or I didn't want to pay that money, but wow, it was great, or we went to it anyway. So we went to the concert, comma, which was expensive, says the main point is we went to the concert. The fact it was expensive, eh, just by the way. And that's the way I think of it a lot sometimes, is I think of it as kind of this, oh, by the way, here's extra information. Um, here's two examples about extra credit. The teacher gave us extra credit, comma, which was worth 10 points. If I'm just telling you, we're just talking about different teachers, and I'm saying, hey, I had this teacher who gave us extra credit, which was worth 10 points, eh, you know, we're just talking about that. But if I had told you that I had, say, a 68 in my class, and I said the teacher gave us credit, which was worth 10 points, and wow, did that save my grade, then that those 10 points become not just this, I'm mentioning 10 points, but 10 points that are very important to that specific thing I'm talking about, my grade. So I hope that, I mean, for me, that kind of example makes a lot more sense to think about how um, if you're just saying, by the way, we got 10 points, or here I'm saying, by the way, no, there's no by the way there. I'm saying I got 10 points, 
teacher gave us extra credit, which was worth 10 points, and that 10 points made a difference. So it can be very contextual. You have to pay attention to what you're saying um, around the writing. Now, there are three little minor um, extra information rules, and they're pretty straightforward and easy, but sometimes people just, one, don't know them, so now you will know them, um, or two, don't pay attention, and then a lot of times when we don't pay attention, they can have very bad effects. So, cats rule, dogs drool. This is a contrast. One thing and the opposite. Cats rule, dogs drool. I like ice cream, comma, not liver. So we've got I like ice cream, not liver. So we're just showing that opposite, that contrast. It was the part with the explosions, not the kissing that we liked. It was the part with the explosions, comma, not the kissing, comma, that we liked. So we're just putting those in commas because they're extra information. So that one's just real straightforward. Just remember, if you're saying it was one thing, not the other, then that gets um, commas. Um, it does, we do use the exception for you don't need it for very short um, phrases. However, again, context. In 1975, I was five years old. That was the year I first went to school. Here, you can see I'm working toward talking about the year. If I want to prioritize that year, I'm not going to set it off with a comma as extra information. But check this one out. In 1975, I was five years old. I didn't worry about bills or work at that age. Here I'm starting to talk more about age. So in this case, 1975, I would totally put in the comma there. Um, and then let's see. Here we go. Here's the more mature part of our presentation today. So these are some things that I pulled off of an internet site where people are just making ghastly, of course, comma mistakes. And you can see a lot of social media. First one, fucking a dude. I love the first response. Can't believe it's taken you this long. <laughs> um, Paul, class canceled all day to do whatever I fucking want. I love fucking college guys. Wait, what? Man, bacon makes anything taste good. Okay, don't wear black people. Hmm, that sounds difficult. I would say don't wear people at all. So what happened there? In a lot of these cases, it's two different things. One is direct address. So when you directly address someone by using their name or some word as you would a name, use a comma to set it off. Miss Wood, comma, can you explain commas to me? Loan me some money, comma, bro. So that's where you want to make sure you put that comma. If you're saying, sweetie, hey, man, dude, whatever it is, put that comma around that. That's extra information. Main point is, can you explain commas to me? Main point is, loan me some money. Those commas tell us who we're talking to. Who we're talking to. Um, here's another one. Let's cook, Grandma. Great idea. Cook with Grandma. Or without the comma, let's cook Grandma. No, 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 no. We don't want to cook grandma. The other time we can get in, in trouble with these is exclamations. So when you use an exclamation, use a comma to set it off. Um, you can also use an exclamation, exclamation point if you're really serious or excited, but don't do too many of those. We're not like, you know, crazy texting. Um, and I do lots of exclamation points in my text, so I'm not raving on any of y'all. Exclamations, sometimes called interjections, are simply words of surprise or emphasis. Wow, hey, yo, dude, ouch, ta-da, wee, yikes, mm, ew, arr, oh, egads, hmm. And if you want to check out more, the list goes on here. So anytime we have something like that where here you can see dude, it kind of comes across as a name, but it's emphasis, it's that point. Um, so here, man, it's an exclamation. Bacon makes anything taste good. Even hospital salad totally changes. Don't wear black, people. So who are we talking to? This one's an exclamation. People, we're talking to people. Don't wear black. Class canceled. All day to do whatever I fucking want. I love fucking college, guys. Unless you love fucking college, guys. In which case, you don't want the comma there. But the point here, and the reason I keep using this, even though sometimes people are like, dude, language, is that this is a great example, and this one really sticks with you, of what is it you want to say. Do you want to say, I love fucking college, guys? Or do you want to say, I love fucking college, guys? Just make sure your commas say what you mean. And this one, of course, same thing. Fucking a dude or 
fucking A, dude. So, not doing this correctly can lead to confusing text, status updates, all sorts of things. So make sure and get this one right. Um, so, if you can take the info out of the sentence and it still has the essential meaning, use the commas. If you take the info out and it's different, unclear, the essential meaning is different, don't use those commas. Um, and so the commas, that's our dance. So our three basic ways to think about commas, and what I always do is I always look for commas in my writing whenever I'm proofreading and I'm like, oh, there's a comma, okay, does one of these rules fit? And that's really what I do. I mean, I do that. I've been teaching for 20 years. I've been reading, heading toward being an English teacher, all of that kind of stuff for, you know, most of my life. And I still do that because it matters, because I want to look good. And more than that, I want you to look good. So when you're just writing, don't worry about this stuff. But whenever you slow down and you're starting to go through and, um, you know, proofread your writing and look for those things, then stop and look for the commas and ask yourself, is this a list? One, two, three, commas. Do I have a full sentence here, full sentence here? I gotta have something in the middle. So I need that comma and the fanboy because the comma's not strong enough to do it on its own. Or is this some sort of extra information, in which case I need commas? And you come up with a yes or no, and you may have to go back to, I've written sentences where I wasn't sure and I had to go back to, what is my basic sentence? Where's my noun? Where's my verb, my predicate? What do I need? So if you stop, again, slow down and think about this and do this thoughtfully throughout this semester, then as you go through, you'll get better at it and you'll get to where you don't have to think about it as much. You don't make the mistake as much. It's muscle memory. Just like doing a layup, learning any kind of skill, the more you practice, you practice thoughtfully. You don't just do it, do it. So, um, all right. Let's see, last couple of things. Here's how it all works together. So here's my basic sentence. And we saw this in writing down the basics. My dog, little buddy, boom, that's who I'm talking about, ran in and jumped on the counter. There's one thing he did. There's the comma. And so we're combining sentences. He started talking. Freaky, right? But when we give more details, we can see how these all work together. While I was looking out the window, comma, extra information. My dog, little buddy, comma, because I'm going to put some more extra information in here, who is somewhat of a scallywag and at times very sneaky, comma, ran in and jumped on the counter, comma, and I'm combining sentences. Much to my surprise, that's extra information, put a comma in there. He started talking, comma, saying, comma, hey, human, give me some bacon, eggs, and toast. And we've got those commas, bacon, comma, eggs, comma, and toast. Um, so there you can see how they all really go together. Um, so as you start, um, again, as you work on your writing, whether it's here, whether it's in any other class, whether you're, you know, I'm not telling you text your friends differently. They may be like, oh, what do you think? You're so smart using like semicolons and shit in your text. No, you don't need to do that. My sisters know, like I'm in a hurry when I don't do that. Um, but um, as you're as you're looking at your writing, as you look at other writing, really think about you know those three rules, the three three things or more, commas in a list, the extra I mean the two sentences got to have that fanboy and that conjunction in the middle. Remember you can drop the first um, I mean conjunctions that comma and the and the fanboy. You can drop the first of those if they're all the same. Cancel them out just like in math. Um, and then that next one is that extra information. And the more you do that, the more, once you start to learn the rules like a pro, you will begin to break them like an artist. So let me know if you have any questions um, and just, pra it's practice, practice, practice. So don't be frustrated if it doesn't come to you all at once. Take care, cool beans.